Tonight's top EU stories from the UNIT website include Croatian fishermen see little to celebrate under EU policy Traditional remedy milk of magnesia banned by the EU EU referendum law hits trouble Serious cross-border threats to health Plus, we must answer the €100,000 question I'm Rick Timmis and this is the UNIT Nightly News. First, from our homepage, an English language sign at the Fisherman's Pier in the Croatian town of Umag reads, This fishing port was rebuilt with support of the European Union. But most of the 3,700 fishermen who ply their trade in Croatia's eastern Adriatic fear that the country's accession to the EU and strict new laws and regulations that come with it may be the end of their jobs. I'm afraid we're in for a lot of unpleasant surprises, said Danilo Latin, whose family have been fishermen for four generations. We'll lose the subsidies, we'll have to change our nets, fish further from the shore, there will be more competition and new restrictions, so we're looking at harder times, he said. A beloved British medicine has disappeared from shop shelves after falling foul of balmy EU rules. Milk of magnesia, used for generations to combat indigestion, ulcers and upset tummies, has been outlawed because it contains a tiny bit too much sulphate. GlaxoSmithKline stopped manufacturing last autumn but were allowed to sell off their backlog of supplies. Now stockpiles have dwindled to such an extent bottles are changing hands for £20, ten times their normal price on the auction website eBay. David Cameron's pledge to guarantee a referendum on Britain's membership of the EU was in doubt last night after officials warned that proposed legislation would not be legally binding. An official House of Commons analysis says a series of further parliamentary votes will be required in 2016 to enshrine a future referendum in law. It warns that the legislation being debated in Parliament this week, if passed, could have little legal relevance as it could be ignored by a future government. The analysis concludes that it would not appear possible to hold the referendum without the further agreement of both Houses of Parliament after the next election to set the date and terms of a future vote. Based on lessons learned from recent public health emergencies and building on existing EU-level instruments related to health threats, this proposal will set up a coherent framework for crisis response, although the Member States have the responsibility to manage public health crises at a national level, no country can tackle a cross-border public health crisis on its own. In the current financial turmoil, it is more important than ever to focus on actions in areas where the added value is evident, such as minimising the negative effects of potential public health crises. Recent cross-border events, such as the H1N1 pandemic in 2009, the volcanic ash cloud and toxic red sludge in 2010, or the outbreak of E. coli STEC 0104 in 2011, had significant effects on society and demonstrated that none of the impacts of these emergencies can be confined to only one sector. Therefore, through improved multi-sectoral cooperation at EU level, other sectors need to be equally prepared to manage the impacts of a public health crisis. Even if we do nothing, our relationship with the rest of the European Union is about to change fundamentally. The survival of the euro as a single currency requires a deepening of political and fiscal integration of the member states, which will have an impact on the UK. The government has repeatedly argued that a stable euro is in our national interest, without explaining what institutional architecture it envisages in an EU where, apart from us and Denmark, all other countries either already are or by treaty obligation will become members of the single currency. 
British voters are now offered the prospect of an in-out referendum in 2017. For some, this is based on a simple democratic principle, the need to give and affirm consent. For others, it is the first stage of leaving the EU. Some are against a referendum full stop, fearing it is little more than a mob rule, the dark side of democracy. Today in our video library, time for a light-hearted look at job hunting in the Euro bubble. Today's video follows two young guys as they hunt down a fab new job in Brussels. I'm Rick Timmis, reporting for the Unit Nightly News. I'll see you soon. You can get lots more news stories and information on our website, theunit.com. You can get in touch with us there, and we particularly welcome your letters and points of view. You can follow us on Twitter. Our Twitter username is the e Unit. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel for all of our regular updates. You can join me and the rest of the team for interactive discussion and debate on Google Plus at any time. Are you looking for a public speaker for your event? Our public speakers are happy to come and discuss Britain's relationship with the EU in your area at no cost. If you would like to add interest and value to your group event, then get in touch with us via the Word section of our website. Join us in our live Question Time style online show, The Unit Interactive. Broadcast live on our website, theunit.com, and globally via thehangoutshow.com. Join our community on Google+, and you can be part of the wider public voice, united in freedom, liberty, and independence. Simply join our community, the unit on Google+. Links to the community page are below. <laughs>